I think what's really interesting is, you know, when you start to unpack this, there are all sorts of assumptions being made uh, that aren't being checked, right? Mm -hmm. So one is that, you know, you absolutely are legally obliged to um, for, you know, maximize shareholder value and that's it, that's your job. Well, the law doesn't say quite that, it's much more subtle. Uh, there are lots of different shareholders who have lots of very different interests, so which shareholders are you talking about? But there's another assumption in this, which is that performance-related pay is going to make people do a better job. Right? This is not substantiated by the research. It just isn't. We tend to think, oh, if you pay more, people will work harder. It, there's just, I can't find the proof. I can find proof that it'll, you know, it'll make people run a little bit harder for about 15 minutes. <laughs> But I can't find the proof that long term, over time, it really delivers better work mm. from more qualified people. Mm. But this has been a truism in all you know, capitalist societies for a very long time. And it's about time we started questioning some of these shibboleths because I would say that not only does performance related pay not deliver superior results, I would say it almost guarantees inferior results because it encourages, incentivizes really some very perverse decision making. Mm. So I'm looking for a little bit of a kind of creative and courageous thinking about why are we even beginning to think that this is the right way to pay people. Have you seen an institution that is doing that kind of thinking? I mean, is there a model that you Not in financial institutions, yeah. in other kinds of businesses yeah. I've seen it. Um, you know, and I would say that some of the most innovative businesses in the world, which I write about because it's so much more cheerful than this. Um, <laughs> um, the most innovative businesses in the world tend to be employee owned. And the only way anybody in those companies do better is if the entire company does better over the long haul. Not just a few shares, but you're talking about cooperative type situations. Yeah, so whether you're talking about Ocean Spray mm. or whether you're talking about probably the world's best engineering firm, which is Arab. Mm. Right? So this is a very different um, kind of organism which prioritizes the social capital implicit in the business mm. as having at least equal, if not more, weight than the financial capital mm. in the business. And I would argue that that's why their innovation is so sustainable. It's why they have such outstanding reputations for incorruptibility. Mm. And it's why increasingly really smart young people are gravitating to those kinds of firms. That's interesting. Because they have demonstrable structural social value. Just as a, as a footnote on that, there is um, emerging strong evidence in the public sector that, bonus, uh, that um, performance related pay and bonus pay in teaching and policing, for example, produces perverse results. Yeah. So it crowds out in yeah. the intrinsic motivations for people to do those jobs. Right. They might want to be a police officer in order to be respected by the community, in order to be seen to be doing the right thing, in order to be doing the right thing. You start giving them a publicly declared bonus, right. and first it means their, their own society starts looking at them and going, oh, I know why you're arresting people, it's so you can get your yeah. bonus. Exactly. So it actually starts undercutting the reason they've gone into that work. Same thing in the teaching profession. So maybe there is a crossover into and banking. It's, it's quite interesting because part of what the kind of new managerialism has tried to do is say, oh, well, we want to keep people on the right track, so we're going to give them a target. Uh, but the pro problem is that they focus so much on that target that they're completely oblivious to the havoc they may create in order to reach it. Mm. And I think we've seen that you know, extensively in yeah. financial institutions. That's so I think, you know, and I would also say and urge people to look at the vast psychological data that shows that thinking about money crowds out social mm. connectedness. Mm. You know, there's buckets of this stuff in every country you care to name, <laughs> and we have to start taking it seriously because the people making decisions about finance are human. We may not think of them that way, but they really are. <laughs>